finished uh, discussing the DC DC converter including how to uh, make the bandwidth independent of the input voltage and how to uh, compare it with the reference and so on. Okay. So, just as a quick uh, summary. the LC filter and the load resistor RL, this is VO and typically because uh, references have some standard values, you compare uh, the output voltage. attenuated version of the output voltage V naught by k with some reference V ref. Okay. So, this will work. Now, this uh, when it eventually reaches steady state, the output voltage will be k times V ref. Okay. And if you change the value of V ref or if you start from some other initial condition, how fast it reaches steady state is governed by the bandwidth of the system. The bandwidth can be well approximated by the unity loop gain frequency and you have to set the unity loop gain frequency should to be uh, less than the natural frequency of the LC filter. And uh, you have to make sure that the LC filter may have peaking but even at that peak, that peak has to stay below 0 dB. Okay. So, that is the idea. So, you will be operating under the uh, condition usually where the unity loop gain frequency is well below omega n. So, the phase shift due to the LC filter is not substantial at that frequency. Okay. So, uh, that is one thing and we saw that uh, the loop gain is proportional to V s and inversely proportional to V ref. So, if you want the bandwidth to be independent of the input voltage, you have to make V ref also proportional to V s okay. and that is not a difficult thing to do. You know that uh, like for instance, in the triangular wave generator that you made, what was the, what determined the height of the triangle? VDD, yeah. So, the Schmidt trigger that you used had a certain width and the width of that is what determined the peak to peak value of the triangular wave and the width of that is related to the supplies used. So, if you have a Schmidt trigger that is powered from V s, then you could have uh, this condition okay. and there are many ways of uh, many other ways of doing the same thing. Uh, we evaluated the loop gain, we have done all the analysis, you can work out the examples in the tutorial. The only thing is of course, because we attenuated V naught, we have another factor of uh, 1 over k in the loop gain that you have to take into account while choosing the component values. Okay. And this uh, type of DC DC converter can uh, produce a voltage in principle anywhere from 0 to V s okay, as the duty cycle alpha varies from 0 to 100 percent. Okay. But you cannot produce voltages more than V s right. So, such a converter it is known as a buck converter and this buck this basically means that the output can only be less than the supply voltage V s okay. and there are other kinds of uh, converters which uh, uh, are boost converters 
and they can generate output voltages which are greater than the supply voltage. So, if you want you drive it out and then sit. So, this is a buck converter ok. Any questions about any aspect of this converter? I think this is close to what you have built in the lab. And as I had mentioned earlier, uh, the higher the switching frequency, the smaller the values of uh, L and C. That is why you can make at high, if you can switch at higher frequencies, you can make the whole thing more compact, ok. The size will be uh, smaller, but of course, if you try to switch at higher frequency, there is power dissipated in the switching process itself and that will be higher. So, given a technology, there will always be some optimum. If you switch too low, you have to use very big components and if you switch at very high frequency, the losses will be too high. So, there will be some sort of optimum, ok. So, let us say this V s is uh, 5 volts and V naught is 1 volt, ok. And the R l is 1 ohm. What will be the current drawn from V s? The average current drawn from V s? You understand the question? You have uh, somehow configured the reference voltages of the reference voltage of the buck converter and the value of k. So, that the output voltage is 1 volt, the input voltage is 5 volts, ok. And the load resistance is an amp, uh, uh, load resistance is 1 ohm, ok. What is the current drawn from V s? How would you go about calculating this? Hmm? How will you calculate it? First tell me that. What will you do? How will you calculate this? Current through the inductor. No, I want only the average current drawn from V s. I do not care about the waveform, let us say. This has got completely nothing to do with the uh, V ref and all that stuff. And if you short the inductor and open the capacitor, I think there will be. What happens to the switches? Oh, no, you in normal operation, what should the, the output waveform look like? Huh? DC, ok, DC with some small ripple. So, obviously, like when I say make an approximate calculation, you neglect that ripple, ok. Then what? What is the principle you will use? Like, what why did we make this DC DC converter? What was the purpose? Ah, so then how will we do this now? Yeah. So, what is the what is the power dissipated in R L? 1 watt. So, where is that coming from? Huh? From V s ok and what else is V s supplying? And that ok. So, let us say this R is really of the order of kilo ohm. So, we completely neglect that ok. So, what what is the current drawn from V s? 1 ampere really why? How much? 1 by 5 the whole idea was you do not have any losses in conversion right. This is like a transformer. So, there is no loss here these are all like peripheral stuff you just completely ignore them ok. So, you have 1 volt and an ampere flowing there. So, that means that the power delivered to the load is 1 watt ok. Now, the power supplied from the supply voltage V s has to be at least 1 watt. It will be 1 watt plus any other losses in the system. Now, we assume that there are no losses. Let us say the switches have no loss and the inductance and capacitance also have no loss ok. 
So, clearly 1 watt has to be supplied there. So, the average current has to be 1 fifth of an ampere. Okay. So, it is exactly like a transformer is not it. So, if you had a transformer of course, this works only for AC and if you had 1 volt RMS and a 1 ohm resistance here and let us say this side was 5 volt RMS, what would be the current flowing there? What would be the current flowing there? Yeah, the same I mean there is no power loss in the transformer. So, the power going here should be the same as that one. So, this is one fifth of an ampere. Okay. Is not it? In fact, that is the whole purpose uh, for which we made the DC DC converter to have lossless power conversion. Now, in reality there will be losses in particular the inductor you cannot make it uh, without any resistance because you make it using some copper wire. So, it will have some series resistance. So, that will have loss the switches will not be ideal that is when the switch is on it will not be a perfect uh, short circuit there will be some series resistance. So, that will have a loss and so on. So, the power that is uh, drawn from V s is slightly more than 1 watt. Okay. So, now the efficiency is the power delivered to the load the load voltage times the load current divided by the power drawn from the supply. Okay. These are all average values. right? So, this you want this to be 100 percent of course, 100 percent is not possible because no real component is lossless. So, in good uh, well designed DC DC converter this can be well above 90 percent. Okay. It should be in fact, be well above 90 percent and the higher the power uh, the absolute values of the power the more you want the efficiency because if you have a kilowatt DC DC converter and you have 99 percent efficiency that means that you are still like burning 10 watts somewhere could actually substantially heat up the system right. Is this okay? So, this should be uh, quite obvious actually this is the reason why we use the DC DC converter we have lossless conversion. Okay. In reality there will be some loss which you can estimate you can assume lossless operation calculate all the currents and uh, voltages in the system and then assume let us say small resistances with the switches and the inductor and so on and then see what happens. Okay. So, let me take the same I will assume that the duty cycle is adjusted correctly I will not show the rest of the feedback control. has one fifth duty cycle as you want. Okay. What will be the waveform there that is between these two points? What is the waveform going to be there? Huh? Same as what? What is the amplitude? So, it will go from 0 volts to 5 volts. Okay. Now, please try and sketch the current waveform. Okay. The waveform of the switching signal S is going to be like that. So, the waveform of uh, this V i hat will be the same, but uh, going between 5 volts and 0. Okay. Now, what I want is the waveform of I L versus time. Okay. So, first how will you go about calculating this? 
what will you do? Assume that it is a well designed DC DC converter, how will you calculate this? Hmm? How will you go about calculating this? First find the voltage across the inductor, Okay. what will be the voltage across the inductor? Huh? We have had minus 1. Okay. So, clearly the output voltage is 1 volt. So, this blue curve minus the red curve which is uh, that is the voltage across the inductor. Okay. Now, what can you say about the, the steady state voltage across an inductor? What property can you assume regardless of the circuit? Zero, zero DC value. It's exactly like the steady state current through a capacitor, right? The capacitors and inductors are duals of each other. What is true for capacitor voltage is true for inductor current. So uh, there is no average current through a capacitor in steady state. Otherwise, the it will keep on growing, right? The voltage across the capacitor. Similarly, there is no average voltage across the inductor in steady state. Okay. So that, if you look at uh, the books, it's called volt second balance. All it means is that uh, the integral of uh, V, I mean it is not growing, Okay, integral of uh, V with respect to time. right? So, the average voltage across the inductor must be 0. Okay, Is it 0? No? Yes or no? It is not 0 or is it 0? It is 0, right? Obviously, because the average voltage of uh, V i is what appears here. So, the average voltage of the difference has to be 0. Okay. Is this fine or not? So, now, uh, now tell me how will you calculate the current? So, you can of course, try to do the frequency domain stuff, calculate Fourier components and so on. It is too complicated. Uh, the easier thing is, you assume that the output is exactly a constant. You know that the output is going to have some ripple, but you neglect that. You assume that the output is exactly constant at 1 volt and then uh, look at the inductor voltage and from there calculate the current. Okay. So, please draw the current waveform correctly for this. Uh, make the graph correctly with all the numbers also in the correct places. Okay, what is the answer? What is the answer? What what does I L look like? What is the shape? Triangular. Okay. Clearly, the voltage across the inductor V I hat minus V O that looks like this. It will go between four volts and minus 1 volt okay. and it spends 4 times as much time at minus 1 volt as at 4 volts. right? That is why the average voltage this positive area is exactly equal to that negative area. Okay. Now, remember this voltage actually has a ripple and if you want to do it accurately, you have to calculate the Fourier components and do that, but uh, that is just too painful. Okay, We want to get an idea of what it looks like and also again like I have repeated many times, the approximations that you make are uh, depending uh, dependent on the context. In this case, we want a DC DC converter that is we do want the output to look almost like DC. right? So, we do whatever we do, we will have designed the values of L and C so that the ripple here is small. So, we assume the ripple is 0 and the output is exactly 1 volt. So, then it becomes easy to evaluate. right? The inductor uh, current is always related to the integral of the inductor voltage. That is of course, just the property of the inductor, but whether you can calculate that the integral easily or not depends on the waveform of the voltage. Okay? So, in this case, it is a rectangular type waveform, it is easy. So, the shape will be during the when the inductor voltage is positive, V L is positive, it grows and then when it is negative, it falls down. Obviously, the you know that 
time derivative of the inductor current is the voltage across the inductor divided by the inductance. Okay, so that means that uh, when the uh, voltage across the inductor is 4 volts, it rises steeply, and when the voltage is minus 1 volt, it does fall, but not as steeply, right? And obviously, what is the meaning of uh, the positive and negative areas here being equal? It uh, starts from here, goes there, and then comes back to the same point, and the same thing repeats. And this is the meaning of steady state also, right? I mean, we said in steady state there cannot be a DC voltage across the inductor because it now then it goes up and comes down. If there was a average voltage across the inductor, then the current would actually go on increasing or decreasing. It's exactly like if you had an average current through a capacitor, the voltage across it would go on increasing or decreasing. Okay. Now, the peak to peak value of this is easy to calculate. What is that? Yeah. So. All we have to do is to simply uh, this depends on the uh, period. So, if this is T s okay, and this period is in this particular case how much uh, T s by 5. Okay. So, all we need is this area. So, that is 4 volt times T s by 5 times 1 by L. Okay. All I have done is to calculate I L to be integral of V L D T divided by L. Is this okay? So, that is the peak to peak value and if you calculate it for the other one, so from the other negative area you will get obviously exactly the same. You will get 1 volt times 4 T S by 5 times 1 by L which is exactly the same number. Okay? So, the peak to peak value I think all of you calculated correctly, but what are the individual values the bottom and the top? What is it? What are the? What is the? If I call this like V A, uh, sorry, this is the current, right? So I A and I B. What are I A and I B? Huh? Yeah. So the way to figure that out is to recognize that the average current is at the midpoint of I A and I B, and what is the average current here? One ampere. Average current is 1 ampere, right? Because the load current is flowing through this. Is this clear or not? Load current is flowing through that. So, this midpoint is 1 ampere. So, the top and bottom are basically 1 ampere plus half the peak to peak voltage and 1 ampere minus half the peak to peak voltage. Is this clear or not? The peak to peak ripple can be calculated, but the average value can be anything, right? I mean, the inductor has memory for current just like capacitor has memory for voltage. Okay. So, if you are given the waveform of current through a capacitor, then you can calculate the variations of the voltage, but what that absolute voltage is depends on the total charge that is accumulated from t equals minus infinity to now. Okay. So, if you start this circuit from 0, the inductor will have 0 initial condition okay. and the capacitor will also have 0 initial condition and then you start switching this, the output voltage will start growing okay. and in that time, the inductor current the average value also will build up it is not yet in steady state and after a while it goes into steady state. Okay. So, that steady state means that it will have an average current of uh, 1 ampere and this peak to peak value that you calculated. The average current has to be 1 ampere right because uh, are you convinced that the average current is 1 ampere or not? Why? Why is the average current 1 ampere? Huh? So, Kirchhoff's current law has to be valid and of course, it is valid for individual Fourier components also. So, the DC through RL is 1 ampere, the DC through capacitor is 0. So, the DC here has to be 1 ampere. Okay. Is this fine? What is the current through the capacitor? What is it? Average is 0, but what is the waveform? It is exactly the same, but the midpoint is 0, that is all, because this average part here. So, this is 1 ampere, this flows through R L, and the variation around that flows through the capacitor, that is the idea. Okay. 
in fact that is the purpose of putting the filter this is one way of uh, thinking about it of course if you do the laplace transform you know that it is a filter but time domain reasoning sometimes is quite intuitive also you can understand that the uh, current through the inductor basically keeps on uh, I mean there is a ripple in the current through the inductor and then uh, the ripple part of it goes into the capacitor the DC part of it goes into the resistor that is what you want ok. This is actually a very very common way of calculating things when it comes to DC DC converters. The reason you do not use that full uh, Fourier expansion is you can calculate it and for computing and so on it is easy, but uh, when you have uh, let us say I give you the Fourier series of some periodic signal it is not very easy to visualize what the time domain stuff is right. If I I mean for very well known waveforms like a square wave perhaps you can recognize even there it is difficult ok, because if you look in the frequency domain you will see impulses at uh, f s 2 f s 3 f s and so on. So, what kind of waveform it is it is much harder to figure out ok and when you have separate Fourier components it is also not easy to say what the peak to peak value is. If you have a single sinusoid you know it is uh, related to the amplitude, but if you have multiple sinusoids exactly what the peak is the peak to peak is you know yeah. yeah. it is 1 by R L, where in the resistor yeah yeah in the resistor you will get 1 ampere yeah yeah R L is uh, I mean ok I did not specify R L is 1 ohm here I think earlier I was using that. So, that is what I used ok so, yeah I mean I do not mean that for any R L it is 1 ampere it is 1 by R L okay. I mean if I have to write everything symbolically this is V naught by R L and this uh, peak to peak voltage what is that that is basically V s minus alpha V s that is the voltage across the inductor in that period and that integrated over a period of alpha T s divided by L that is the peak to peak value ok. Is this fine? So, you get uh, uh, an expression of the form of 1 minus alpha times alpha ok. Any other questions? I mean, this may look confusing in that, uh, but I mean, there is logic behind it. So, that is why please follow the logical reasoning and after that do the calculation. So, because the uh, input voltage to the filter V i hat is a piecewise constant waveform and the output is nearly constant, it is quite easy to calculate the exact waveform through the inductor, ok. The voltage across the inductor is also a piecewise constant waveform. In this particular case, I have assumed that it varies between plus 4 volts and minus 1 volt. In general, in one of the phases it will be V s times 1 minus alpha and in the other phase it will be minus alpha times V s ok. And of course, steady state is reached only when the areas under these two are equal ok. So, from that you can calculate how much it rises in each of the phases I mean each of the switching conditions of the uh, in, uh, DC DC converter right. So, you get the uh, current through the inductor to be a triangular wave and you can calculate the average value quite easily because uh, the average current is drawn only by the resistor not the capacitor and that is the same average that average has to come from the inductor. So, the midpoint of the triangular wave that you calculate will be the average current that is being supplied to the load is this ok. Now, the peak to peak uh, current the variation the triangular variation of the current after you subtract off the average that flows into the capacitor it has to right. So, what will be the voltage across the capacitor if that current flows into it? What kind of voltage will you get? Sorry, if a triangular current flows into a capacitor what will be the voltage across the capacitor? What is that? Yeah, so if uh, the current is like this right and this is 0 in this case because the average current has to be 0. So, those areas are equal to each other 
So, what will the voltage across this be? Parabola, ok. So, what will that look like? You can calculate it, I will let you do the calculation. So, it will do something like uh, It will also start from here, go there and go there. So, during the positive parts it will increase and during the negative parts it will decrease and so on. So, it will do that ok. And the peak to peak value of that, how much is that? It is basically the area of this divided by the capacitance value right, is not it. So, now this looks like a very convoluted calculation. First, we assumed V naught is a constant. Based on that, we found the inductor current waveform, and from there, we also know the capacitance current waveform because it's the time varying part of it that goes into the capacitor. The constant part of it goes into the resistor. From the time varying part that goes into the capacitor, you can in turn calculate the ripple. Okay, so this uh, small variation that you see, this variation had better come out to be small because if you do this calculation, originally we assumed V naught to be a constant. Uh, now, we are calculating the voltage across the capacitor ok. What will be the average voltage across the capacitor? 1 volt I mean that is what you want it to be right. So, it will be 1 volt if the regulator is working fine the feedback loop is working fine it will be 1 volt. So, this midpoint will be 1 volt and you can calculate this ripple again with some simple algebra. So, now this ripple had better come out to be small ok. If you calculated this for your L and C values and found that this ripple is half a volt, then even the inductor waveform is probably quite inaccurate ok. But if this voltage comes out to be like 10 milli volts, then assuming that the voltage across the inductor is piecewise constant is quite accurate ok. So, this way you can calculate exactly what the uh, time domain the peak to peak ripple is without having to go through Fourier series and computing it in a computer and so on. This is ok, but again do not uh, get confused by seemingly contradictory assumptions that is we first assume V naught to be a constant ok that is so that we can calculate the inductor current conveniently. Then we assume that the time varying part of it that is excluding the average flows through the capacitor and that is a triangular wave that is also easy to integrate maybe not as easy as a piecewise constant, but still not as difficult as some arbitrary waveform. So, then by integrating that you get the capacitor the ripple of the voltage across the capacitor and then that will give you a formula for the ripple. You please calculate it yourself ok in general terms. So, calculate in fact do everything calculate I L and V C for uh, input voltage of V S a duty cycle of alpha and an out uh, so that will already give you the output voltage and a load resistance R L and inductance L and capacitance C ok. So, you can do this uh, in general terms oh and also what there is something missing here what is missing there is some other parameter that is T s obviously the switching period T s or switching frequency F s must be there ok. So, let us say you calculate the voltage for the uh, you calculate the expression for the voltage across the capacitor what is the sanity check that you will use do not do the calculation here you can do it later, but just tell me what sanity check you will use. Huh? Okay, what should happen then? For alpha equal to one or alpha equal to zero, what should happen? Yeah. So what should be the? So I calculate the expression for V C of T. Uh, sorry, not V C of T. Uh, the peak to peak value of the capacitor voltage. It will be dependent on every one of these variables in general. So, now you are saying you will use the boundary condition alpha equal to 1 or alpha equal to 0. So, what should the value of this be for those boundary conditions? Huh? What is that? 0 obviously, because uh, if uh, alpha is 1 then one of the switches the, the horizontal switch is always on you will should simply get 5 volts across the capacitor. So, it should come out to be 0 and for alpha equal to 0 also 0 because the output is 0. It may not be a useful condition for a DC DC converter that is what it should happen. What about other variables? What should be the dependence on T s or F s? What should it be? 
Will T s come into the picture or not? It won't. Yeah, it will be small, but uh, what is the dependence? I mean, how should T s appear? I mean, there are many ways of making it small if uh, T s is small, right? It can be proportional to T s, it can be proportional to T s square, square root of T s, anything. We have actually discussed this. That is not a DC DC converter. <laughs> T s square right, because it uh, remember the frequency domain result, what is the high frequency attenuation of the second order filter? Minus 40 dB per decade, we already discussed that right. So, uh, the uh, and the switching frequency will be in the high frequency range, where the attenuation of the low pass filter is going off at 40 dB per decade. So, we had said that it will be inversely proportional to the square of the switching frequency. So this if you calculate in terms of T s, it should be proportional to T s square or in terms of F s inversely proportional to F s square ok. And what do you think will be the dependence on L c? Hmm? What will be the dependence L c or does it not depend on L c? It is possible right it will depend how much how will the what just take a guess on the expression on the lc why ah huh. uh, okay fine that's good yeah what is it a square lc so one by lc what i actually didn't quite understand the explanation. You have S square L c in the frequency domain transfer function. So, no that is correct, but <laughs> tell me what it is. Huh? 1 by L c yeah. So, that is correct. So, essentially if you have a second order filter, if you write it in uh, some uh, general form, you have S square by omega n square plus some other things. At very high frequencies, this is the only thing that remains right. So, it is not just proportional to inverse of the frequency square. So, it will be like omega n by omega square ok. So, omega n square is 1 by L c and you also have 1 over omega square which is proportional to T s square ok. Or another way of saying it is yeah it is a square L c and then you neglect the low frequency terms and that is what you get. And what she was saying was that uh, we already calculated the expression for the ripple in the current. So, this had 1 by L and from the ripple in the voltage you will get another 1 by c. So, the 2 will get multiplied and then you will get 1 by c square ok. So, you already know like so much about the expression right. So, you had better not get it wrong or if you get it wrong you should recognize it that is the important thing. How will it depend on R l? No, the expression for the peak to peak ripple across the capacitor that is the peak to peak output ripple of the buck converter. How will that depend on R L? Inversely proportional. Why? Okay. So, how is the midpoint related to the ripple? Really? If R pi equal to one, the answer was zero. Why is it proportional to 1 by? Huh? Ah. Yeah, so what is the answer? Yeah, it does not depend on R L, right? The peak to peak current was independent of R L, is not it? The peak to peak current was dependent only on the output voltage that you set that is alpha and V s ok. So, the peak to peak current was independent of R l only the midpoint was being uh, determined by R l ok. So, now you take something independent of R l and you integrate it and even this integration is depends only on C it does not depend on R l. So, actually the ripple is not dependent on R l ok. Is this ok and the frequency domain way to think about it is you have the second order expression right 1 by 
S square L C plus S L by R plus 1. What is this expression at very low frequencies? Huh? What is that? 1. What is it at very high frequencies? 1 by S square L C. So, this is minus 40 dB per decade and the expression for that is 1 by omega square L C. Okay. So, it is only in this region that R L, R L influences the transfer function. Okay. At very high frequencies and very low frequencies, the response is independent of R L, is not it? R L only determines how far this peaks. If R L is very low, it is uh, over damped and it will not peak and if R L is very high, it will start peaking more and more. But if you go very far from the natural frequency, the gain is independent of R L. Okay. And remember the switching frequency again going back to the frequency domain uh, reasoning, the switching frequency will be somewhere here. So, the components of the switching frequency that will come out the fundamental and the harmonics, they come out with a gain that is largely independent of R L. So, the peak to peak ripple is independent of R L, is it okay. So, again this uh, frequency domain is very powerful, it is more abstract, but uh, you can do a lot of calculations that is simply not possible in the time domain. So, in this case we were able to make some calculations in the time domain, but uh, that involved some uh, big approximations. But the time domain stuff is more intuitive, you can kind of get the shapes and those things easily, uh, but you frequently cannot make any exact calculations with that. Okay. So, that is why you should learn both and reconcile the results of both. So, there is no one tool that is suitable for every application, right? You, like for every problem you have to see whether this is suitable or that suitable and the only way to figure it out is you practice every possible way like endless number of times. That is the reason for practicing, right? This is not for, uh, uh, it is not that you expect the same type of question to appear again, but there is no various techniques of solving problems you have to do that, okay. Please think about these things and calculate it. If you have any questions, raise them in class so that we can redo them here.